and telling you if they are available for Drupalik. There's a Drupal module upgrader tool that helps with all the custom code that you have, and then you can code code that you have for Drupal 7 to be upgraded to Drupal 8. And then you still have your data and then you can use uh, the migrate suite for to migrate to uh, Drupal 8. So you basically need to take modules and see if there is Drupal 8 teams, uh, convert your custom code, and then migrate over your data. So that's, um, that's going to be a lot of work as in that sheet. Uh, a benefit with Drupal 9 though, so the, the improvements now that we have Drupal 9 coming, is that we made the Drupal module operator to uh, generate code that is also compatible with Drupal 9. And that's an interesting question that I will go into a lot more detail later. So you will have code that's compatible with Drupal 8 and 9 at the same time. Uh, and all the rules in Drupal module operator are now compatible with them. And the migrate multi-level core module should be stable for the Drupal 9 release. In fact, it went stable yesterday. Uh, and the Drupal 8 9 code is in Drupal 9 code So all of the core migrate modules are now stable for Drupal 8 9 and 9, uh, which should have a lot with moving all the data that wasn't before. You still need the migration path for all the country modules that you have in some of them. So these are the improvements that we have with uh, Drupal 9, but uh, unfortunately it is uh, not, not denying that you, will, you are facing a rebuild. So since um, the 71st time of Drupal's uh, user base is in Drupal 7, we realized that we need to support Drupal 7 so we turn on it the following. Uh, we'll have Drupal 7 releases uh, in uh, the second quarter this year and the uh, last quarter this year and one last release uh, the second quarter next year. And that's when Drupal 7 security and bug fix support ends. And there's going to be a very long support timeline for Drupal 7 as it is from where it started. Uh, but uh, there's going to be, there's evidently going to be people who will not be able to move off of Drupal 7 in this time frame. So we're going to have vendor extended commercial support for Drupal 7, which is very similar to the program that was for Drupal 6 long-term support. Uh, the name is slightly different, but it's the same concept. Um, and you'll be able to sign up with vendors to support your code base and the methods that you're using, etc. Up until at least the end of 2024. So it's going to be three more years of support after Drupal 7. Drupal 7 community end of support, free end of support is at the end of 2021. And there's three more years of vendor extended commercial support uh, after that. If you're interested in this, it's under Drupal Rock slash project slash B7ES. Uh, and all the links are going to be in the slides. Uh, so hopefully, this is going to help with uh, moving off. Uh, uh, Drupal 7, so <coughs> if you are unable to move out and to get support of Drupal 8 systems. Um, so since Drupal 7 is coming and support at uh, the end of next year, we obviously are trying to release Drupal 9 as soon as feasible, so people who want to skip Drupal 8 have a possibility to do that. So we learned a lot from this mistake of rewriting everything and making everything all new and and needed to migrate data and needing to rewrite the code. And so we made innovation in Drupal 7 entirely different, uh, innovation in Drupal 8 entirely different from how it was in Drupal 7. Oops. So what we did in um, Drupal 8 instead is now instead of opening a whole new branch for Drupal 9, we just kept improving Drupal 8 and kept improving Drupal 8. And then Drupal 9 is going to, be on, going to be a point on the road from Drupal 9 is going to be a checkpoint basically and I'm going to continue to move on to Drupal 10. Now what this means, or what allowed us to do this, is basically we select these three tools. So first is semantic versioning, which allowed us 
which allows us to introduce new features with binary resistance, so 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, etc. introduce new features, like BigPy, JSON API, layout filter, setting stray, media library, etc., etc. These are all new features that were not in Drupal 8.0. And we've introduced them in, in minor releases up to date. So we could add new features, and we also kept backwards compatibility when we add new, these new features. So, so all the existing Drupal 8 sites could move up to the new minor versions, and they could enjoy the new features. There were some mistakes that we made in how we applied some data changes, etc. So obviously, this was our very best effort. Um, uh, and we kept improving how we did things. Um, and that's uh, basically the general way that we've improved. The other change that we made is we've introduced special releases. So instead of just waiting when it's ready, we have uh, introduced special releases twice a year, every six months. So you can get new features twice a year. This in some cases, people to contribute to Google for because they get their contributions out to people who spend twice a year. Twice a year without breaking the API and we have to make the data and we write their So that's a lot of, uh, lot of improvements from the Drupal center. And the third thing that we did is for improvements that are not possible to finalize in six months. We've introduced experimental projects, experimental modules and themes in Drupal 4 that allow us to release unfinished modules and themes with Drupal 4 and mark them. Appropriately and say it's going to get done, please try to find and provide us feedback so we can get new things out to people and get feedback about them sooner than later and adjust our current uh, So they, these uh, three things in combination allow us to innovate within Google without needing to release the whole new Drupal 9. And so the question is, why do we need to amend it, right? So we kept including layout of the media library and type of this API. We've introduced some new uh, experimental element things and a bunch of other things. So why do we need to amend at all? Like we can go on and include to play and have nice things. Um, so <clears throat> one new thing that we introduced with Drupal 8 is a bunch of external dependencies because we realized that Drupal grown to be such a big project that we don't have the capacity anymore to, to maintain it ourselves. Uh, and it also didn't make sense for ourselves to maintain the whole code base because that would be our, 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 our own walled garden with our own APIs and with our own ways of doing things. When people come in, they would be to learn all everything in Drupal from the ground. So it made more sense to outsource parts of Drupal to other projects. It also made more sense to, to use uh, in industry-wide standards, I guess, for example, to apply these projects to others use and so it's easier to learn Drupal when you come from Symphony, you come from project with employee, etc. So we've introduced these third party dependencies with the best intentions. But that also means that we need to understand the release schedules of these third-party dependencies. <coughs> so simply to a jQuery and jQuery UI as CPI did before, with the icons are presented here, all have their own release schedule. And we are in Symfony 3.4, which is going out of support next year, and, um, and Quick 1, which we don't know if it's going out of support, but Quick 2 is already out, and Quick 3 is in development. jQuery, is, uh, is not on the firm footing, I would say. jQuery UI is end of life. Uh, CK04 is going to be end of life in two years. So we need to think about these things and plan ahead. Um, so our biggest dependency that we need to think about that I just mentioned is Symphony 3, which has an end of life date at the end of this. And that means that Drupal 8 needs to be out of life at the end of next year because it depends on Symphony 3. If we are to update Symphony 3 to Symphony 4, we would need to break APIs from Drupal 8. And that would not be a good idea. That would uh, break our promise of having backups in Drupal 8. 
So we need to add Drupal X support. Also, we don't want to fork Symphony 3, so we don't want to maintain our own fork of Symphony 3. So this, this is really only choice we have. So because we need to add Drupal 8 support next year, we also need to start um, introducing Drupal 9 sooner than later. So our plan is to release Drupal 9 uh, very soon, uh, June 3rd, 2017. And alongside Drupal 8.9, and start working up and start releasing new versions of Drupal 9 in the world. So we need to move the community over to Drupal 9, our new major release, because we need to get them out of Drupal 8 before it has to put it on the And then Drupal 9 will depend on Symphony 4. And now there's going to be a bunch of crystal going on what's going to happen in the future. So stay with me for a little bit. These are not uh, firm promises. Keep in mind, but the likely way that things will unfold is the following. Drupal 9 is independent of Symphony 4, that's a given, we know that. But Symphony 4 end of life is in Symphony 3 and 4. So, we will very likely end of life Drupal 9 at the end of 2024, which, by the same logic, that we've introduced Drupal 9 means that we'll need to introduce Drupal 10 um, in, uh, in two years after Drupal 9. So the Drupal 9's lifetime will be quite limited compared to Drupal 8. It's been out for you know, almost five years now. And Drupal 9 will be practically, uh, practically have releases for two years and go for an extended so kind of long-term support release. Uh, likely we will offer And then we have to put the support time. So this is what <coughs> the some crystal bowling here. But basically this is what we are looking at right now as the as the most likely scenario unfolding for Drupal 8 to 9 to 10. Is we release Drupal 9 uh, June 3rd this year. And Drupal 9 will get uh, four feature releases with new features. 9192 and then 9.4 will move on with different kind of So that's uh, at least for people used to have Drupal in the I think it's quite a shock because it means that we'll have Drupal 10 in two years' time. And I have this session about Drupal 9 now, but we can have Drupal 10 in the foreseeable future. Also, we're gonna end support for Drupal 9 before Drupal 7 then the right things for that. So it's also uh quite you know, quite shocking. Uh, so uh, <coughs> what allows us to do this is the one new process that we introduced in Drupal 8, the application processes. So what we decided to do in Drupal 8 is on top of adding new things, adding new things, adding new things in the backwards in a new way, like I told you earlier. We've also decided to mark things that we will remove in the future as executed. So in Drupal 8, we keep things that we will remove, but we tell people that we are going to remove these things in Drupal 9. So we, we uh, introduce future changes, mark future changes ahead of time and tell people how Google is going to change with the next few years. And so that's what we did uh, in preparation for Google Night. And we need to make this very easy and seamless. First of all, because 70% of Google's interface is still in 7, and they need to understand that we're not going to repeat the same thing to update process anymore. We're going to make it easier. And second of all, because there's going to be Drupal 10 in two, in two years, and people need to do the major upgrade in two years again, and they need to understand that it's not going to be that hard in two years either. So we need to make this easy now from Drupal uh, 10 from Drupal 7 and from Drupal 8, and, and uh, make everybody understand the week of the system. So this is how it looks like in the schematic. Let's say we have the Drupal 8 7 API, We've introduced a new solution for something, and we deprecated the old solution for the same thing, by like copying files around or sending a message on the page, something along the plane. <coughs> so we have a new way to do the new API or a new module. 
and we have a deck that's really clear and pretty much what we're doing. We're not suggesting we use it anymore, but we keep it around. And we continue to do this um, until 8.8. And then the 8.9, we have a bunch of new solutions, and we have a bunch of different things. We still have Symphony 3.0. That's the last release of Drupal 8, but we're going to release in June 1st, 2020. And the first release of Drupal 9 that we're going to also release on June 3rd, 2020, is Drupal 9. And Drupal 9 is basically removing all the things that we said we're going to remove. We keep around all the things that we've added already in Drupal 8. And we update our So in other words, the Drupal 9 API will be using 8.9 API minus all the replicated things and third-party dependencies. So this makes it very predictable what's coming in 9. It makes it easier for us to, to release 9 because we have a very long time scope. It's not like we just need to rewrite this API and that API and do however we want. And it makes it easier for contributed modules and customers to keep up with what's going on in Drupal 9 because we've already told them in Drupal 9. So Drupal 8 code that is not using deprecated APIs will continue to work on Drupal 9. And this is how you can have a module for our team compatible with Drupal 8 and 9 at the same time. Because as long as your module or team is not using anything in the very boxes at the areas, then it could be compatible at the same time with Drupal 8. And that's our goal going forward, that projects could be compatible with multiple major releases. And so this allows you to get ready for Drupal 9 on Drupal. And what we did in, in the Drupal 9 code base so far is we, we delivered not what we promised, and we removed all of the app deprecated and user deprecated code that we said we get in the We started around the middle of November, uh, and we finished our, finished our uh, project, or this project at the start of March. We basically removed uh, all the deprecated APIs in Drupal 9. So if you go and try out Drupal 9 Alpha 2, this is the easiest to try out Drupal 9 Alpha 2 today. It's Alpha 2 was released in the beginning of March. Um, so um, the suggested way to use Drupal 8 and 9 is Composer. Uh, first, a need to install Composer, and then someone create project, with a community project, and the Alpha 2 has been get you uh, version of Drupal, try 9 is going to be the directory that it's been created in, and then even if you don't have a web server or a database or anything on the system, you have to use the SQL uh, in it, and then you can just do a quick start and do one demo of Drupal. And spoiler, uh, spoiler alert, it's going to look exactly the same <laughs> 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 It's exactly the same project uh, that has the different things. It's going to be the same UI, the same uh, menu items, the same So this is how you try out Drupal uh, 9 Alpha 2 today. But what are you going to do with a website that you have on Drupal 8 in this case because we already talked about Drupal 7? So what are the five steps that you need to take to upgrade the Drupal 9 from a Drupal 8 website? So the first step that you need to take is you need to ensure that your environment is compatible with Drupal 9. There's been a bunch of environment requirements made for Drupal 9 because that's all the requirements of Drupal 8 will go at the end of the life and then it has to be used. So PHP 7.3 is required to do Drush font in the version that supports Drupal 9 if you use Drush. Uh, MySQL 5.7 if you use MySQL and there's a bunch of other uh, database requirements if you use Postgres or MariaDB or Kafka or SQLite, they will they will have great solutions. Uh, you can look at the uh, requirements for the So we based a bunch of requirements to make sure that the environment that you're running in has versions that uh, that can hold other uh, uses for the lifetime. Next, next step is you keep Drupal 8 for up to date. 
because Drupal 8 itself is introducing all of these uh, new solutions that are going to be in Drupal 9. But if you are an old, old version of Drupal, please keep updating it. Your old version of Drupal is going to kind of support every 12 months. So uh, you need to go and keep it updated. And there's also um, a reason for that that we only support upgrades from Drupal 8.8 8 and 8.9 to Drupal 9. Uh, and part of the reason because when Drupal 9 comes out, then Drupal 8.7 goes and it supports this release of Drupal 9 to Drupal 8. So Drupal 8.7 is not going to be supported anymore um, itself. So we can't really go and fix any problems with you know, so Drupal 8.8 and 8.9 will still be supported at the time when Drupal 9 comes out to be the ones that have, uh, are going to have uh, support for uh, the update path. And then you need to keep all of your contributed projects up to date again. Uh, and that's because a lot of the contributed projects are keeping up with Drupal 9 new projects. So if you go to the project pages of your contributed projects, this is the CDN module and the web form module. The CDN module has this arrow, you can see the arrow icon that it says Drupal 9 is going to release from 20. This module is ready for Drupal 9, that's a version 3.4. So CDN module Apex 3.4 is compatible with Drupal 8 and 9 at the same time. You can install it on the internet. And web form module tells you a different story. It says the full support to provide the web form module will be coming. AX6X release. And this release will be good because you guys. And uh, I believe it will be compared with the people that are to do that. So every project has their own story of how they are referring to the nine And uh, the hundreds of them, I think the last time I looked, 600 of them use this uh, Drupal 9 plan to under the order of the pages to tell you about their plans. Uh, if they have plans that maybe help uh, executing the plan, this would be the place where they tell you. Uh, so this is the state of uh, Drupal 8 printer in general. 44% of uh, modules have no problems under Drupal 9 compatibility, so they should try to release for Drupal 9 compatibility. They will be fine, and a bunch of them have uh, all problems with the same So they will be uh, waiting for 8.7 to go out of stock. And how do models do this uh, multi core support this is a great question. So the 8x3.4 release of CDN module, for example, that I just mentioned, has this key in their info <coughs> that says their core range requirement is 8.8 or and so we've introduced this key in Drupal 8.7.7 and Drupal 8.8. Uh, and this allows projects to be compatible with multiple releases of the Drupal 4 at once. So see the module is with this, and it tells Drupal 8.7.8.8.8.9.9, etc. They are compatible with these versions. So when you install it, they are uh, making work. Now this is very awkward that you have the 8x version of the module when they are compatible with Drupal 9. That's quite awkward. And actually Drupal.org re refuses to allow 9x tags anymore on projects because what's going to happen on Drupal.org is semantic version for contributed projects. So the AX prefix is going away on Drupal.org from uh, projects and projects will have their own semantic version numbers, uh, three components. So the 3.4 release would go and, and go to 4.0 and go to 7.0 So uh, contributed projects are going to have some of the version releases and they, these releases could be compatible with more the versions of the And this is very close to, the, to being launched. So if you go to the door, there's a similar example project that has already some of version releases. And we are basically discussing whether we are launching it this week or next week or something along those lines. So it's really close to being launched. Uh, a lot of people are just ready for this localized world of this value. The composer is going to be a bunch of components are ready to deal with this version. So very exciting. Uh, 
And then uh, the, four, the step four is you remove definitely the API in your testing project. And we'll talk about the tools for that in a minute. But basically, after step four, what you have is a group of eight websites that has contributed projects and your custom projects, etc. And other than Drupal 8 core, everything else is Drupal 9 complete. So you have a Drupal 8 website that's still working fine. It may be your life site, it's still working fine as your landing site, but it's also Drupal 9 complete. So that's the other mind-blowing thing I think about this whole process. Is the only step that you do, step five, is where you do the so step five is you update for yourself to Drupal 9 because at this point every other component you have on the site is already connected. So this allows you to do all the steps to prepare for Drupal 9 today. You can update all the country projects, you can update Drupal 4 to Drupal 8. Uh, we support updates from Drupal 8, so you can do fine. You can uh, remove the application data and use from your project. So you can do step one to four today. You can all do everything today. You still have a working complete site. And you are right before the last step to update to the point. And the last step is basically complete to the point. And if you use the point, which is the last step. And then you are in Google Lane. So uh, this is the process of updating from Google 8 to 9, which is, I think, way better than updating from 7 to 8. Because you can prove all the steps in between the years to have a working site. And then the last step is the process. Let's talk about the tools that you can use to uh, upgrade and to remove your deprecated data and ID. So if you are writing code, this is how the deprecated data and looks in code. So here we have a deprecated annotation in the code that says Drupal's messing. It's deprecated in Drupal 8.5. will be removed before Drupal 9 is released. And use this instead. And then there's a trigger error and then the function that says the same thing. And then there's a backwards compatible implementation of the function. So this is how we deprecate something. We keep the API in the plate, but we also tell people that we're going to remove this in Drupal 9. So the way you find uh, uses of Drupal set message is either the update status project, the Drupal 8 version, or the Drupal chat from the line tool. Both of them are fine. You can run them on your project. And here's the screenshot of update status. So it tells you about how many errors were found in chaos tools and uh, update status itself, etc. We can go in and look at the list of these application errors and fix them. And upgrade status even checks your quick files and your employable files if you use the new core and requirement. It will check your CSS library definitions, etc. So basically, it does a complete scan of your code base and tells you where you are. Right. Then there is a tool called Upgrade Vector, which is coming from the Drupal Vector uh, command line project. And this actually generates you a patch to apply to your queries uh, that replaces the old uses with the new uses. So in this case, your Drupal message is replaced to the messenger and the customer's So you can use the Upgrade Director Drupal R project or Drupal Vector CLI tool to generate patches. Um, there's very few uh, API changes implemented yet in this tool. Um, uh, Midcam uh, next week was going to be planned in Chicago, but went all digital because of the coronavirus. So they are going to have a sprint next Saturday, uh, contribution day, on writing the rules for the automated code conversions. So you're welcome to join me remotely next Saturday, one week today, in the contribution day of Midcam. Because they are going to work on this with several to contribute to the project techniques to write more transformations for this. So you can automate the transformations of your code and the contributed code into the other one that's from the Drupal 9. Then, obviously, once you have a Drupal 9, a code that you believe runs in Drupal 9, 
strategy should run the RTA test against the domain L2. Ideally, we have automated tests. If you don't have automated tests, uh, Google Alert has a way to run uh, the same updates that is kind of code analysis on your code base on Drupal 8. So it's going to run your code against Drupal 8. Uh, we have this PHP stand to the kind of code that we can use. You can uh, watch uh, through these slides after the fact and you can go over to the system. There's a status page on actorrocket.com slash 29 where there's an interactive form can talk with the status of all of them good and um, have charts and, and all kinds of other visual things. You can review how uh, actually the models are preparing and which ones are closed and which ones are ready. Uh, it has a whole 9,000 projects uh, covered. Uh, some projects will be in new branch, or maybe be new branch, because, as I said, uh, Drupal 9.0 will come out with 8.9, and 8.7 is going on supported exactly at the same time. So if a Drupal.org project wants to support Drupal 8.7 and 9.0, then they can't really remove the deprecated APIs that were only deprecated in, in uh, 8.8. So um, then they need to have mainly to have new branch. So you may find projects that say I need to wait for the command to be released, or uh, I have to have more branches uh, for the two weeks or something. Alright, so the final question I guess is what are the only final question is what are the new features of Google Manage? That's a trick question. Because there's no new features of Google Manage. So as Dree said, the big deal about Google Land is that it should not be a big deal. So I think um, people always wanted to have an easy upgrade path. That was one of the features that people wanted to have, is an easy upgrade path. And this is the feature of Google Land, the easy upgrade path. And there is no other feature, other new features in Google Land. However, Drupal 9.1 awards will have new features because it's a meta version. So we have the experimental workspaces module that's going to get stable and will be considered in the future. We have the experimental help topics module that will want to get stable in that end and it's considered in the future. We have the Clara team in Drupal 8 core that's experimental, it's a new admin team. It's not yet stable, but once it becomes stable, we can enable it in the standard profile and the Everybody can have a much improved learning experience in Drupal 9. So this will be a new feature in a future version of Drupal 9, a new stable feature. There's a new front-end theme being built, Polygram, that's going to be introduced in a later version of Drupal 9, as in the same theme again. So this is a new front-end theme that's going to be used alongside Bari. Uh, then CK Editor 5 is fun to be introduced as a new standalone visiting editor or maybe an ultimate visiting editor if you need uh, because uh, we need to move on to CK Editor 5 and then whatever you are working on. <laughs> so there's an ideas project where you can you can suggest more ideas and we are going to launch the state of Drupal survey soon where we will get a lot more feedback from the community about what you want to see in Drupal. So once again, there's going to be four more releases of Drupal 9 with the movement, which are uh, going to introduce a new features. Uh, actually, three more releases that's going to introduce new features uh, in the So then the actual final question is when will it be released? Uh, so I already said that Drupal 9.0 stable will be June 3rd, 2020. Uh, so if you asked me a week ago, I could have shown you a conditional speed because we don't know yet. Now we know there the beta one is going to be released next week because we are going to be a requirement. It's in a matter of days now. Uh, the RC one is going to be out at the start of May and then the schedule is going to be confirmed. And the first feature release, the new feature release of Drupal 9 is going to be December 2nd, 2020, so before the end of this year. We're going to see the features in Drupal 9 again. So that's where our new features are. 
So summary of what we talked about, group of seven to the next year is the last bit. That is it. That's the next one. Uh, if you cannot make the big step at this point in time, then there's none of your standard support at the end of 2024. Uh, Drupal 8 to 9 is the easiest to update in the decade because we feel learned from what we did before and uh, we made it much easier. You need to keep up with Drupal 8 core and contributed projects because we keep up with the changes. You need to make your own dev community that you need to make it available. And this will result in a working Drupal 8 site that is Drupal 8 compatible eventually. And when all the components are ready and your environment is ready, then update the Drupal 8. As I said, you are getting ready to gain your Drupal 8 site. You can start today, go and do it now. And Drupal 9 will get you to get in the future starting this assessment. If you need more and discuss, uh, you can see the state of the Drupal Enjoy the community discussion on this slide. I'm in this channel. Thank you. Once again, thank you. Once again, these slides are available on slides.com with this QR code with that URL. I'll provide them now. I'll scan the QR code. Um, we'll put it on Skype in the recording, obviously. <laughs> Put it on computer and whatever is available. And write it down. And this is the final thing. And maybe I have three minutes for questions. Anyone got any questions for Emma? Can you come? You do come down and. Uh, Talk to him so I can see who, see who you are. No? <laughs> it looks like you're, gonna, you're doing you, a good job. Can you go back one slide? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you go back a slide to the scan me page, please? Yeah, so these slides are once again open source. You can put them in your meetup company, whatever it is. Thank you. Thank you.